Okay, so where we left off last time is adding kind of a lot of edge loops into the model and mirrored the eye over from one side to the other. So I just selected what was the right eye right here. And then if you just press the mirror button, it'll bring it over perfectly to the other side. And since that tutorial, I was doing a little bit of problem solving because I just, using the multi-cut tool, I got a little sloppy in the back of the head and ended up with a five-sided face back here that I had to fix. And so something you can do, there's a couple of things you can do to kind of look out for problems in your model. Um, something this easy, and you just need to make sure to edit undo it once you do it, is you can just press the smooth button and see does the geometry look fluid there. Let's just say that I have a five-sided face. You see, I just use the multi-cut tool there just to make a five-sided face on purpose right there. So if I press smooth now, you see right in there, it got a little weird there. So that's kind of one way you can kind of check for errors. But what I recommend over that, let's see here, is to go to mesh and then clean up and press the options box. So again, that's mesh, clean up, and then the options box right here. Pull that up. And so on clean up options, I'm going to try clicking these two right here. We actually don't, we definitely don't want four sided faces like this. So do not check that one off. Um, and what this is going to do, so I'll go into objects mode and press apply. Let me see if I can get, find the right setting here. There we go. This is going to be it. Nope. I'm pressing edit undo after each time. Okay, sorry, I always have to just kind of go through and remember which one I need to select. So sorry for that um, little delay there. But so what I do is under cleanup options, uh, faces with more than one, four sides have that checked and then concave faces have that checked. And you see here, you remember I made that, that end gone over here. And so when I press apply on the model, see the model shifted colors a little bit and it highlights and it kind of makes it a fix where it turns it into tries there um it tries to fix the model for you but how i use this cleanup options box is i just press apply and it'll highlight in orange the area that's got a five-sided face and try to fix it and then from there i'll edit undo and just look at the area and maybe check in vertex mode, so right click in vertex, and then I can see the area that's a problem and fix it just by deleting that vertex there in this case. And then I'll press apply again, and you'll see nothing changed. And so if nothing changes, that's a pretty good sign that your model's in good shape. Um, so again, this cleanup options box, I, I don't, or I highly recommend not using it to actually fix your model per se, but I do recommend kind of checking off these two check uh, check boxes and then using it to kind of lo locate problems in your mesh. And so that's kind of something I was doing just a few minutes before starting this tutorial because I had just a couple in the back that were a problem. And so I used this tool to just highlight the, the areas that were a problem and then moved on from there. So this model should be in good shape just from uh, that point of view. And so I'm going to right click and um, mirror the geometry and when you mirror the geometry it should whoops um, uh, weld together there um, if it doesn't weld together just make um, and it and it definitely should um, but if it doesn't weld I always make sure to press edit undo after kind of moving one of those vertices 
Um, if it doesn't weld, I just go to mesh um, mirror and select the options box and just um, make sure that these settings look like this. So now I want to show the the sculpting kind of the smooth relax tool and then um, using sculpting this using the soft selection tool because basically what's happened so far is we've made all these edge loops this model's pretty full if I start dragging vertices around one by one now in this stage this is going to be pretty painful and not you know just not end up well so the soft selection tool is going to be a really helpful tool once your mesh starts to get this dense so um, the first thing I want to do is go into objects mode and I will under the sculpting tab up here so there's poly modeling and then I'll go to the sculpting tab and so we have the smooth the surface of a mesh without changing its original shape so that's the main one I use here to kind of just even out the topology and then there's the smooth button which I also find useful here but I also try not to go too crazy with it here um, and so the reason for that is, so at this point, I feel like I've traced my model pretty well, looking in the orthographic view, but you know, it's still, it's still going to look a little alien, you know, and, um, you know, um, tracing it kind of brings us up to a certain point in terms of just knowing that the proportions are approximately right and the topology is there, so it'll be workable when we bring it into Mudbox. And so what this step is, is just kind of using our artistic eye for a moment and just making the necessary adjustments just to kind of bring it up another step before starting to, you know, um, get to the final steps here. So um, with the whole model selected in objects mode, I'm going to click this button right here, which is the... Um, smooth the surface of the mesh without changing its original shape. And I'm going to make sure that symmetry is turned on. That's really important here. So in the modeling toolkit, turn on symmetry right here. And so now when I sculpt, it'll do it on both sides. And if you, you can see here, I have a brush and it's that size and I don't have a lot of control. So the way you get control over it is you just double click the tool and it'll show up like that. And on your model, Maya wants us to work really big, and so the brush size starts out really big, and so when you first use the tool, it might look like this, where you can't even find a brush. And so just make sure that under the tool, you, under the size, you change the brush size to something really small until you can kind of find that brush here. And I would say something about this size would probably be good. And so I have symmetry turned on. I double clicked that, that button right there and it's got this tool settings menu. And I changed for me, my brush size, I set to 1.5. And here, if I'm gonna just kind of use my, my mouse, kind of draw along it. And you can see here, it's just kind of, I can take this strength down a little bit if it's going a little too hard. And it's just a way just to kind of get the topology to kind of even out a little bit. And if I drag it this way, see it's kind of evening out some of the topology there. And so I just, I find this tool really helpful. I'm trying, I'm gonna try not to go too much into the face there. I was just, um, the top and the back of the head, you know, I just hadn't been paying much attention to it because I was mainly concentrating on the topology on the face. But even here, it's a little uneven.
and I'm being very careful in the face. I don't want to do too much here, but I do want to even out the topology. Oops. And I definitely want to steer clear of the lips here. Um, cause if I smooth out the lips, you see it, like it totally messes it up. So, um, do, I, I would highly recommend not doing this much around the no the nostril or the lips and just use it sparingly here. So that's a tool that I find helpful. You know, if my model at the beginning of this, the topology in the back of the head was just a little, a little uneven and a bit distracting back there. And it's just a way to kind of, you can just draw it along a curve like this and you can just kind of smooth out the topology and get it just flowing a little nicer. So that's a helpful tool. And so another helpful tool is to, this thing looks boxy right now, right? Because I have it in the one mode. So that's kind of my model at this point. And if I press the three button, that'll give me a preview of what this looks like smooth. And I have a little bit of a crease going down the middle here, which I don't like. So that's something I might need to work on. And I might also want this lip to be a little more defined. So I think I might need another edge loop or two. Let's see here, going around the chin. So I'm gonna just real quick, just add a mesh. And this isn't something you need to follow along with step for step. It's just kind of look at your model and kind of decide what you need. might have added too much topology there. It's a tough call. Yeah, it's a bit uneven. It's tricky because I had it even before in terms of topological flow, but I kind of want more information there. Um, I will go back to having that edge loop there. I just, yeah, I think I really need that edge loop in there. So, um, sorry about the indecision there. So, at this point, it's just kind of time to shape some things a little bit further. And so, I like to stay in the three mode at this point. So, the kind of preview of what it looks like smoothed. And I can see that I have these ridges here. Um, the hardness of the lip, the topology is there, and I, I want a steeper ridge to happen there. I guess I could just go ahead and fix that. Um, so I'll just select vertex mode. And I'm going on the side and I'm just going to re add some steepness to that lip. It was getting a little too squish together, round it out. And make sure that nothing's overlapping. That's really important that no faces are overlapping. So you can see here, I'm in x-ray mode and this got became darker there. So that's a surefire sign that your geometry is overlapping. So I just dragged it out like that and it cleaned up. Yeah, let's see what this looks like. Okay, so let's let's keep moving. So I press three to get this thing um, smoothed out, and I am going to use the smooth tool just to try see if I can get rid of 
the ridge that's happening in the center of my model, I'm not going to mess with the lip too much. I'm going to fix that in um, ZBrush or Mudbox. But I think I can go ahead and fix this ridge that's happening right there in the center and there in the center. And this happens a lot where you kind of get that ridge in the middle. And so the best way to fix it, I think, is to um, have it selected in objects mode and then click the smooth, double click the smooth tool. Shoot. If it turns black like that, that is always deeply annoying. Um, press Q to get out of it. In the past when this happened, I've had to restart um, Maya. So if you go to the sculpt tools and you double click and it turns black like that, that's Maya being Maya here. Um, and you can't really work that way. So I'm just going to save the scene. And so I have the scene saved. I'm going to quit Maya and then re reopen it. And usually that fixes that problem. OK, so selected my model. Fingers crossed here. OK, so it fixed it. So I'm going to leave that in the tutorial. If, if you click one of these sculpt tools and it turns black, just make sure to save, um, close down Maya, and then open it again. And at least on my machine, that, that seems to fix it. And so right now I have it previewed and smooth. And you can see here I have this annoying ridge kind of going through the center there. So let's just see if I use the Smooth tool. So I double click the Smooth tool. And this is the brush size. That's the amount. Make sure that symmetry is turned on here. You want this to happen evenly on both sides. So I just definitely, whenever you're using these tools, make sure that symmetry is turned on. That's super important. Um, Sometimes the smooth tool fixes this. Just have to be very delicate with it. I might even just attempt to fix the lips, even though I know this is precarious here. Um, so my computer is freezing. Good, good. Okay, I don't think this is gonna work here. So I'm going to quit my again. Great. Um, so quitting my again, going to open it up again. Um, I'm going to make sure after I open it this time, if Maya is acting this buggy, I'm, I'm going to, once I open up Maya again, I'm just going to make sure that the project's set correctly. Because usually if Maya's crashing this much, um, this isn't a very ambitious project I'm trying here in terms of the amount of mo you know topology and stuff like that. It shouldn't be crashing like this. So I'm going to check the set projects. So this this is turning into a problem solving tutorial, even though it's supposed to be a sculpting tutorial. Um, so I'm going to open up Maya, and then I'm going to go to File, Set Project, or Project Window. Sorry, File Project Window. Seems to be going to the right place. Okay, so scene set up correctly, it's just not behaving. So I'm gonna bring back my model. I might edit delete by type history this time to see if that helps keep this thing from crashing. Sometimes that'll help keep the computer from crashing if your project's set up correctly and it's still crashing on you. So I just select the model and then go to edit, delete by type history, and that deletes the, the modeling history. And so, Fingers crossed again. I'm going to save my scene and try to fix that ridge again. So with the object selected, I'm in three modes. So it has the appearance of being smooth right here. And you can see there's the ridge there and kind of a crease happening in the middle of the face that I would like to fix. Um, so I'm just going to double click on this tool and 
try. Oh, so make sure that um, symmetry is turned on. Okay, I'm going to try this again. So that ridge is kind of staying put. Sometimes the smooth tool can fix this. I'm going to switch over to the um, this tool right here, right next to it, smooth the surface without changing the original shape. Let's just see if that helps out. Worst case scenario, we'll just fix this in, um, in ZBrush or Mudbox, depending on what you're using, because that will be able to fix this up. Um, so these tools can be helpful for fixing a crease. I'm just going to stay at it here. <laughs> you can see I'm creating like a inverted chin here at this point. So I'm gonna get out of here, just check. So the neck area I'm gonna worry about less. I'm more concerned about this area. The lip, I don't wanna mess with too much because again, I don't wanna lose that definition I have here. So from here, I'm gonna start showing the soft selection tool because I think I've gotten as far as I can with the smooth tools. And full disclosure, there was a little bit more of a crease here um, before I started this tutorial and I, um, fix the crease by using that tool. So even though that looks unsuccessful in that um, this tutorial here, um, those tools can be helpful for getting out the crease. And I had gotten, there was a bit of a crease in the forehead that I had knocked out just about 10 minutes ago um, using that technique here before I kind of managed to press record here. So I'm gonna stay in the three mode and I'm gonna go to soft selection and start sculpting that way just a little bit. So soft selection tool, if you remember, is the select tool right here. I'm going to double click it and you'll get this menu with the tool settings and open this up and click soft select. And so when this is selected, and again, we want to make sure symmetry is on and you right click and go to vertex. You see here when I select a vertex, it kind of has a region that is selected. And so I have, I can set the fall off radius to be large or medium here. And now when I move it, it's not just moving that one point, it's also moving the points adjacent to it that are kind of highlighted in the color. And so when you have this many vertices, sculpting this way can be really helpful and you can start kind of, start making some good changes because again, with this many vertices, um, working just by pulling, ver um, start, yeah, with this many, this, this much topology, just moving vertices one by one is just not really a good option. So you'll see here that annoyingly this tool settings menu changes when I start going into the move tool. So if I want to change the falloff radius again, I have to just keep double clicking there and adjusting that. I'm going to try to fix this area that I had worked on fixing before. I probably should have just given up and fixed this in. ZBrush or Mudbox, but I'm going to stubbornly stick with it here. So you see, I'm using the soft selection tool to kind of sculpt out the whole chin at once here, just by grabbing one vertice. And I recommend kind of continue checking your, oops, your orthographic views and keep matching that up. One thing that's really nice about this, particularly when symmetry mode is on, is you can start being a little more loose with the vertices that you select and how you decide to move them. I was just toggling with the one, two, and three button there.
but kind of once you find the right size tool, you know, so this kind of scale tool right here is helping me out. Careful messing with the eye. So make sure that the eye is still visible here. Because um, if you drag the geometry too much, you can kind of undo a lot of good work trying to get the, the mesh kind of tight in with the eye there. So yeah, just tread, tread lightly in this area. Make sure that the soft selection tool isn't going too far into the the eye region there. And so I'm just kind of, now I'm just kind of using my eye, as you can probably see here. Just a little more loose at this point. And so one thing that's nice about kind of doing this stage here is it's just kind of, it kind of is a clean way to work here, typically using this um, soft selection tool with a decent amount of geometry. Um, it's just kind of keeping things, um, keeping the mesh simple and um, there's not too much geometry to contend with. We're not gonna gonna be less likely to turn the model wrinkly by kind of getting into detail here. Let's see. And this model's gonna look a little weird. There's still a little bit of a crease in the middle there, which I don't like. Um, Cause she doesn't have ears, you know, so it's gonna look a little bit alien, but just try to remember, you know, try to look at it with the ears cropped out. Or you can skip ahead to the, the ears tutorial and then do this tutorial after that. That's another option. It looks like when I was grabbing the eyes, I might've pulled it A little, you see there that my mesh isn't totally lining up with my eyes anymore. So I need to just, this is one where I might need to fix this manually real quick. Um, and so to do this fix, I could do the soft select tool. I'm just going to make the radius really small. Just kind of bring this back bring it back to home base here. And so I'm gonna select two vertices. Again, make sure I'm still in symmetry mode. Yeah, I got a little ha uh, overzealous there. Um, using, using the soft select tool around the eyes and you can see how that kind of came back to bite me there where um, Oops, the, the model kind of pulled away from the eye and there's a gap there now. And so I'm just gonna go back in and work on this. Something that's nice about the soft select tool here is I can grab one vertice right here and if I have the fall off radius correct, I don't have to worry so much about oops, um, selecting two vertices and dragging them one by one. You can just kind of start thinking about getting away with just being a little more loose with things. Okay, so I think that helped kind of bring the eye back 
end. From here, there's still a crease right here that I don't like, and a crease in the chin and the lip right there, but it's subtle enough that I think that I would rather make the rest of that fix in Mudbox or ZBrush here. And let's see here, looking at this model, it's looking a little square in the cheekbones. Let me see if I can just round that out. We're not going to get this thing perfect in this step. You know, that's never what was going to happen. Um, at least for me personally, I, I do a lot of my work in the ZBrush mode box kind of realm. And this is mainly about just kind of getting the topology right and getting the model set up so that I can trust that the proportions there are pretty close to, to being right. And then the proportions here are, you know, pretty close to being right. So I can kind of trust the eye placement, all that stuff, and it's just going to make the next step of sculpting a lot easier here. So I would say if you bring the model up to this point of um, accuracy or, or what have you in this first Maya stage, that's going to be a pretty okay place to, to be. Um, there's some sculpting issues that I see here where the eyes are still just like, or the cheekbones are just not quite the right shape. The forehead needs some work and the brows. But I think for me to kind of get that totally right, I think it's kind of okay to move it on to the next step um, in the sculpting programs to kind of get that right. So next up, I'm gonna show in the next tutorial how to get the, the ears modeled in and then fill in the nose and the mouth holes. And from there, we'll be ready to take it into ZBrush and Mudbox.